Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to a Sunday stream, <laughs> Sunday live stream. I want to try to do these live streams every Sunday. I don't want to promise anything because once you start promising, you know, a real schedule, uh, sometimes they can get a little harried. They can look a little contrived. So I really am striving to do every Sunday. I'm striving to do kind of um, random thoughts and uh, suggestions from you guys out there. I did put a post on my community page. So please be sure and put your suggestions, your questions, uh, your tips on there for me. Tonight, we're just going to chit chat about reselling, about selling jewelry, um, about cautions to be taken when you do undertake it. In so many ways, it's a wonderful, lucrative um, gig. It really is. And um, But you have to be careful. You have to uh, definitely wade a little bit, wade in those waters because there are some sharks and, um, you know, it can have its uh, low tide and high tide. And that's enough with the analogies and puns. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. We do lots of talk here about jewelry, but in the heart of hearts, I am a reseller. I've been doing it forever since I don't even want to tell you since we took checks on eBay. And um, so I'm definitely an expert when it comes to reselling. I did that even before, even before eBay, actually, I used to resell at flea markets and antique stores and that kind of thing. So it's been something that's always been a passion of mine. I uh, want to welcome your questions. I want you to question how I titled the video if you want questions about that as well. I'm going to say hi to a couple of people in the chat, and then we're just going to welcome everyone periodically, but I do appreciate it. So if you don't like to be um, inundated with names that belong to others, uh, you can probably skip ahead a couple of minutes, and then we'll get to the, to the heart of the matter. As they say, hi, Kathleen. Hi, Becky, Vanessa, Kay, and uh, Deborah over at Timeless Jewels. Mary McDonald, how are you? Thank you so much, everyone who's here. Hey, Anna, Amelia G. Amelia G was the first one here. I wish I had a prize. <laughs> I don't have a prize today. I, uh, I do giveaways randomly here and there, usually at live. So do stick around and watch them, but I don't promise them. I don't, you know, want to allure you here for just giveaways. So that's not, that's not what it's about. I really want you to be interested in the channel and all of that. How's everyone doing? How's the fall weather treating you? Any snow yet? Anybody have any snow come in yet? I know certain parts get their first snowfalls around Halloween. So it's coming. It's definitely coming. You want a prize, Amelia? <laughs> you should get a prize. You should get a prize for being the first one here. What do they call that? The early bird, early bird special. Like at the garage sales. You've got to be the first one there, right? So uh, again, I'm opening it up to questions. If not, I'll start with my uh, little monologue and maybe that'll get you going on some questions. Now I did, like I said, put a suggestion box in my community tab, but you can also use the latest live stream video to leave your comment and question there. So that way I can have them collected and, and, you know, reference, reference them back when uh, I run out of ideas of my own on what type of topics I used to do just to heart to heart. But I think this is kind of the same thing. I just feel like it could be open to more topics that are of interest to you. And someone did ask me, about reselling and what a new person needs to start, what they actually need to get started on reselling. Now, she didn't tell me what type of resell. I know it was jewelry, but she didn't tell me if it was for eBay or if it was for YouTube or whatnot, whatnot. <laughs> so if you're here, clarify that for me. You wore the winter coat today, did you? Wow. Wowie, that's that's soon. Yeah. Where are you? Where are you located? Hi, Miss Anita. Wowie, that's I only wear my winter coat in Chicago. I have a floor length uh, down, genuine down coat that I adore. Thrifted it, of course, for a penny just about, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, but it's fantastic. And that's the only time I think I've only worn it once here in Houston. 
And well, we did have a freeze a couple of years ago. And then, you know, we had that trouble with the grid and all that horrible, horrible infrastructure that uh, plagues us all right now with the way things are going politically. 39 in Cleveland yesterday. Yeah, you were telling me, Vanessa. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I got the lamp on, um, on eBay. Anita, I was really into chess when my kids were in, in middle school. We were coaching chess players. So I was really into chess and I would just spend nights, you know, on eBay searching chess items, <laughs> chess related items. And this one totally reminded me of the chessman, the knight. So I had to have it. <laughs> I'm so surprised it got here in one piece. Oh my gosh. That's one, one drawback about selling, um, hard goods, right? On eBay, you really have to be prepared to, to ship securely because it's heartbreaking when something doesn't come in in one piece for sure. Yeah. I might need my coat this year. Really? Hmm. 47 degrees in Maine. Mm, that's still kind of warm for Maine, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. Indeed. And it's pretty in Naperville today. Good. Well, that's, that's really nice weather. Yeah. Early on, it's, it's not too bad in Chicago, but, oh, I've been there when it hurts. The below zero, those are, those are tough. Let me see who else popped in. And again, I am here for your questions. Uh, but let me just start by saying um, about selling on YouTube. Um. Boy, people have been selling on here for since I've been on here 10 years. I've seen people start selling probably about six, eight years ago. It could have been more, but as far as jewelry sells, maybe about six to eight years ago, I saw some people start selling jewelry. That was Makeup Zombie was the very first one I ever saw, followed by Sandy's Auctions and, and then um, Dwayne over at Mothership Products had a fabulous auction show. Things were a little bit different there. And then actually, I think um, there was always, uh, there's always been drama. There's, there always will be drama, but I don't think the competition was as stiff. So um, I don't know if, if that's, if that can be a problem for everyone. I, I try not to, it's not a problem for me. I don't sell on here unless I'm on a marathon or something like that. But a lot of people do have problems with uh, being able to thank you. Uh, the wall color, I just did it in eggplant. I think it's called eggplant. A lot of people have trouble um, sharing the stage, so to speak. So they're kind of a narcissistic personality. That's kind of why I titled it the way it is. A narcissist does not like to uh, receive criticism or be questioned. So there are people like that on here, but there's a lot of good people on here. There's a lot of good jewelry on here, but we can also talk a little bit about the, the difference that I think you need to make immediately when you sell here. When you sell here on YouTube, YouTube is a very different type of venue because it is honestly not a selling platform. It's, it's more of a entertainment it's a educational channel. It's an educational medium. So it, it really goes into a territory that it's probably not meant to be. And I say that because as you become, as you become known on YouTube and believe me, my tiny little channel is, is a shrimp, but as you become even at five to 10,000 subscribers, you'll start realizing that it can become a community and therein lies the problem because you need to understand that people, people will look at you differently when they think of you as a community. Don't you miss Dwayne, miss Anita? I do too. His auctions were so fabulous. Well, you could sell some good stuff on there too. Anita, I remember all the Christmas things you had and all of that. It was very interesting on that show because he would, he did it for free. First of all, he didn't charge anybody to have people on his channel. And then he would have like two or three different sellers. It would go quick because they only had uh, a few, I think he only stayed on two hours. So he, we had an array of different things. I know Miss Kathleen was on there selling art, selling her husband's 
things, coins and, and knives. And just everyone has, you know, had a different, a different stockpile of stuff to, to go through. And then the, and then there was that kind of camaraderie there as well, kind of community. But what I'm saying is that if there is a problem, you have to really make it clear that you're a business or you may not want to make it clear that you're a business. Therein lies the problem. Therein lies the problem because someone might say, well, I mean, there's different problems. One is they will say things like, well, I was just there to, or they're thinking I was just there to kind of uh, take in the conversation. And, you know, it is actually a, it, it is actually a town hall. It's sort of the new town hall the internet is. And when it's face to face like this, when it is personable like it is right now, people do tend to think that they have friends and that you could be friends here and that that person that is selling jewelry is your friend. And therefore she'll understand if, well, after all you got carried away, you didn't really have the $200 that you found yourself bidding up to. So you cancel. And then that ruins a lot of things. It ruins the momentum of the piece will not be had again. So that's a problem. But more than that, then it also becomes a click. So everyone can go to one channel and support the people there. And if someone has a misunderstanding with someone in that channel or someone in the chat or a customer, then they no longer want to associate with that person. So they get their little click to do the same. And at what point do you say to yourself, wait a minute, that's my bread and butter there. Why am I going to take on someone else's argument that's going to cut into my profits? So, and I think as women, we tend to do that even more. I don't know. I don't, I don't really follow many men sellers. I, I probably should because I have seen some, I have actually run into a couple of things where people would do a, a what do they call it? Um, a talk back video, I guess, or uh, answer back and uh, what do you call it? Um, reaction video to someone else's thing. And I've seen it like in the storage locker unit people as well. And those can get heavy. And, you know, someone can accuse someone of lying about storage locker fines. And, and it just gets really, really touchy. So that's my point about that is make it clear. What are you doing on YouTube if you want to sell on YouTube? And to answer the person's question, just so she doesn't watch for no reason, if she is watching, you do not need much to start selling on YouTube or anywhere for that matter. Uh, you need a smartphone. You can do everything with a smartphone. You don't have a ring light, get a lamp, get a flashlight. Get any, every light you have in the house, but don't show me jewelry in the dark. Okay. Throw under the bus. Yeah, 99% of people are good and kind. You missed Dwayne in the Saturday night. Those were so fun. I mean, it was literally a thing, wasn't it? It was, we didn't even want to go out on Saturday night. We were like, we have to get home to see, to see who Dwayne's going to have on and see all the great buys and you know, those, those sellers would make a killing too. It was fantastic. And, um, and I think it kind of had, I think what made it so different was that it wasn't a, an ongoing, the only ones that were permanent were Dwayne and his wife. We were introduced to new people, new sellers. There wasn't a set. Well, you know, I have to mod for her and, uh, because I mod for her, and I don't like this girl or lady, I'm going to block her or because um, she was not acting right with my friend or she didn't pay my friend. So I'm going to block her over here. It becomes a huge tangled web. And I can't tell you how many videos I just watched yesterday with people uh, kind of doing a reaction video or response video. That was the word I was looking for a response video concerning someone who asked about something else in the chat was being disrespectful about somebody else's argument. This is my point. So, um, that's all I'm saying is make up your mind what you want to do on YouTube. Cause I hear a lot of people say, well, I, I don't care about monetizing. Okay, well, if you don't care about monetizing, well, why are you selling jewelry? I don't care about um, 
attention. So why are you on YouTube? I don't I mean, what, what is it? Which is it? You have to have a reason to be on YouTube. I would never started YouTube to sell. And I had been accused of trying to sell of, of ooing and awing over my jewelry because I want to sell it since the first day I did a haul. Since the first day I did a haul, people have, have said, Oh, you only say that because you want to sell. I wasn't even selling through, through YouTube or through even uh, emails, none of that. And so people, you know, are all, always so quick to criticize. It is very sad. It is very sad. Melma, sorry to just digress, but your hair is so long now, so beautiful. Thank you so much, Susie. You're kind. Outgrowing, you're great. Did you really? Oh my goodness. That's well, that's when I started 10 years ago, because I was a uh, autism therapist at the clinic and I was going through my teacher certification. I did become a teacher as a second career. And um, I remember doing videos in my <laughs> in my scrubs. I honestly just really, I mean, honestly, when you start making YouTube videos, and this is why there's a differential, there really is a huge differential with someone who comes on to sell and someone who comes on to share. Because when I first started making videos, I would make them during my lunch hour from my clinic because I lived very close to the clinic and I would come down for lunch and I was like, I got to do a video. I got to do a video. And I was so excited to get comments and so forth. It's really, it, you know, it was a wonderful way to share. And I loved that. I really, really did. I, I love doing that. Then it turned into people really liked the jewelry and um, the way I did the jewelry. So that kind of, you know, was my concentration for a while. But that's all I'm saying is that you have to be clear as to why you want to be on YouTube and be clear that people um, do break off into groups. They do spread rumors and they do uh, love to cut people off at the knees. They like, I don't know why some people like to be in a cloistered group, even in commerce, which I find so ridiculous. You literally cut your nose off and cut off your customers because someone had a disagreement with someone who doesn't talk to someone and someone doesn't go anywhere. So, I mean, it's just, like I said, the web goes on for 10 years. If I could trace back 10 years, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even, everybody from selling t-shirts to selling jewelry has had someone they don't speak to, someone they don't want them to speak to. So they all come together and, okay, we'll just block her. Okay, we won't talk to her. Oh, we won't go over here. We won't sell to her. We'll lose profit, but we are together. We are together in this argument. And, you know, we're, okay. I'm just, I'm dumbfounded by that. I really am. I always say, um, don't get into some, don't take on someone else's argument because you'll wind up in deeper do do than that person. Why are you taking on someone else's argument? Middle school clicks is so right. And well, that reminds me of, in, in a way, it's like um, a few years ago, we did a paper on bullies in school. And actually, it wasn't even bullies. It was the most popular girl, popular girl mentality, not mean girl mentality. That's kind of old. But popular girl mentality is ancient. And it comes to be by the popular girl spreading rumors. It's not that she's trying to, that she is the best at everything and, and everybody wants to be around her. It's, it's that she eliminates her competition by spreading rumors about all the others. So then everyone wants to gravitate towards the popular girl. And that's a scientific fact. It was actually in psychology today. And we did a, an essay about it. It was very shocking to me. I never would have thought that, that that's what the popular girl relies on. It relies on petty rumors, relies on bringing everyone to her camp so that she can remain the gatekeeper. But anyway, that's why I'm saying YouTube is very difficult. It is a community. Uh, it is, it is, it's a huge conglomerate. There's billions and billions and billions of users on YouTube. So there's a lot of people for everyone to watch, for everyone to uh, create an audience with. Don't let it discourage you if someone um, blackballed you because there's millions and bi actually billions of users on YouTube. So, um, but know that it is for entertainment and if it's for commerce, it will, of course it is. There's places where we can sell our merch. We can sell the products that we're listing. I get, you know, um, affiliate links. I get 
uh, sponsored videos. I get paid that way, of course. But know that if you're going to run a business, run a business and know that when you decide to to steer a little bit away from that, you're going to get you're going to get told well, I thought I was your friend. Well, why did you bid against me? You're my friend. Or when they say in the chat, I'm not bidding against you because you're my friend. Well, how does that make everybody else feel? And and really, do we really need internet friends when we're this age? Can't we just save that for dating? I, I honestly don't, I don't get it. I really, really don't. But back to all the gear that you need. That is all you need is a smartphone. A tripod would be wonderful. I do have this one here. This is like a swing arm one. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a swing arm. And then it holds my phone. And I do that one for the close-up videos, which is what people really want me to do with the jewelry videos, and which is what I use for whatnot. And even on uh, Facebook now, I use this one. Now, I used to have the, was it the Joby? The, just a regular little triangular leg, tri-leg one. That one's great, too. I just found that it got in my way when I would unbox big things. So I prefer this one. I also upgraded and got a mic about four years ago. It came with a little, uh, you can order a little screen to catch all the little peas and you know how you tend to spit with the pea sound. <laughs> but I bought this other little thing that goes on top of it. It's like a little snow cone topper and that keeps it, you know, a little bit from catching all those wind noises. Oh, that's because y'all are always bidding for each other, Miss Lois. That's awesome. But yeah, I mean, what's the point of saying you're only going to bid against your everybody else, not you, because you're my friend and I gave you like five hearts and two kissy lips and uh, a couple of, uh, what do you call it, fire fireworks. You know, I love you. I absolutely love you. I just gave you a heart. Okay, so that's about it. Is there any other questions like that? that you might have anything to to ask um again i'm just cautioning you to be careful where where you take your business on 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 youtube because that's what's there that's what's there that's what you that and collaborations are wonderful until they don't need you anymore you know people will call uh text give me a shout out da da da, da. okay now they don't know you now they could care less you know, hanging on to the coattails of a bigger YouTuber, fine, do that. We know you're using that. That's, you know, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Trying to climb the ladder as best as you can, but don't act like you're in love with this uh, new person that has a hundred thousand subscribers to 200,000 subscribers uh, when you only met her six months ago, but you love her, but it's because of what she can give you. And then when you are done with that Kleenex, you will throw it away and, and on to another one. That's the way some people operate. Test your jewelry and back it up. That's a good suggestion. Definitely, Deborah. Uh, no excuses for not testing jewelry. Uh, acid tests cost less than $20. Absolutely no reason not to do that. Um, back it up as well. Many people say no, no returns. Again, it's tricky here on YouTube is all I can say. There's so many fly-by-night buyers. That's the thing about, about this and the difference between YouTube and let's say Facebook or let's say a private um, auction group or a Facebook group. You can kind of weed out the deadbeats, so to speak, so you don't have to put up with that. But there's no reason for you not to back your jewelry. What's the, you know, why wouldn't you back your jewelry? If you said it was turquoise and sterling and, and it, it arrives and it's not, why would you say you, you won't take it back? There's just no reason for that. And um, so that is definitely a good suggestion. But again, uh, that's really all you need. You also, of course, need to establish a PayPal account, establish a way to get paid. Um, there's no way around, um, fees, honestly, just sending money to your, to your husband, or it's a fee. Everything has a fee there. So there's no way around it. Honestly, you might not pay the PayPal fees that you pay for and the eBay fees and that can accumulate too. But, um, 
then again, you have to weigh that against your the eyes that are on it. The eyes that are on eBay are enormous. The eyes that are on it uh, are, are not going to come and don't even come close to anything that what you have here on YouTube. Plus, I feel like a lot of people, again, the, the coattails, um, just because somebody watches the person that has more video, more views than you, doesn't mean they're going to like you. Whether they like your jewelry or not, sometimes they just don't want to listen to you. Maybe they don't like your voice. Maybe they don't like your lighting. Maybe they don't like that you take five years to show the, uh, a hallmark that doesn't even matter. If it's 925 and you tell me it's 925, I believe you. You know, it's different if it was 18 karat Cartier or something. That's, that's a little different. Make payments on time and let the seller know if there will be a delay. Absolutely. Don't, don't be blocked for that. That is the worst reason to be blocked for non-payment, honestly. And I know that's, that's a big thing. It really is. But again, we have to realize that we, in YouTube, you are a community, whether you like it or not. There are people that if it's a live stream, they really feel like, like they're part of the new town hall. So they're going to hang out. They're going to get tempted. I literally have to not watch an auction. I will get tempted to, to bid. And then I'll be like, why did I spend so much this month? I'll look at my, <laughs> my PayPal difference. And it's like even in and out. <laughs> I'm not trying, I'm going to try not to do that this month, but that happens. It is an absolute scientific fact that auctions do make you do crazy things. So stay off of it if you can't afford it. If you can't afford the money, if it's you, uh, your jewelry or gas, please don't hang out in jewelry auctions. You're going to get tempted. And I don't care what anybody says about, oh, just come in and hang out. Uh, okay, that's fine. I know, I know there is camaraderie there and all of that. But in all honesty, they really want you to spend some money. They're not there for four or five hours just to to say hello. I mean, they really aren't. I, um, like I said, I love doing these videos, but I do them because they're also, uh, they're also a form of income for me. And I feel like I'm constantly trying to come up with creative ways to get you to tune in. I realize the recorded videos are much more lucrative, but I also feel there's a need for a, a reseller a jewelry aficionado who will answer questions, not just promise to answer them, but will answer questions for an hour on Sundays. I may turn some kind of a membership into a kind of a Q&A or maybe a little bit of a reseller powwow, that kind of thing. I may wind up doing that sooner than uh, later, but we I don't know. For right now, I'm really enjoying doing this. I also feel it's a good way for us to get together and talk and you can see me for a little bit. I can see your comments for a little while and we're on real time. Let me go back and see if we didn't get any other questions that I missed. Has shipping costs affected your sales? Oh, it's crazy in Canada, Miss Jill. In Canada, it is always fluctuating between, I mean, I'm just talking one ring, $14 to $20. I just started, honestly, I started uh, charging $20 flat rate for Canada because it would fluctuate. And then it got to the point where here's another reason why I myself also have to remind myself that I am in a business because I will say, oh, it's $2 more. I'm not going to ask her for the $2. I'm just going to swallow it. But then when it's $2 less, the customer will say, hey, it was $2 less. Give me my $2 back. So then I started thinking, you know what? You see how it doesn't always come out the way we think it does? So then I just thought, well, it's always changing so much. I get to the post office. Last week it was 14. Today it's 20. I'm just going to charge 20 and they don't have to buy if they don't want to. And Australia is even worse, unfortunately. Australia is $40 last I sent something. And I'm talking less than a pound. Please sure and hit the video thumbs up, guys, if you're enjoying it. Thank you so much for being here. It looks like 50 people, oh, 80 people are here. Not sure how many thumbs are up, but please be sure and keep them up. And always post your questions as well. This will come up in uh, tomorrow's feed. If you forgot to ask a question, put it in the comment section. Want to make a comment? Please do. I have, 
absolutely no uh, filters on here. This is not a safe place. This is a place where we can just talk. And I mean, I don't need anything to be safe from. I can always zap you if I get an uh, uh, out of hand comment or anything like that. But I'm not going to filter it in any way or have mods, these overzealous mods that zap the simplest of questions because, um, you know, narcissists don't like to be questioned or criticized. I'll bid against anyone. I feel that if they really were friends, they would wish each other well and not real friends. Absolutely. I mean, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want the auction to get as high as possible? An auction house doesn't care what they get as long as it goes as high as possible. That's all they care about, selling the item as high as possible. This is why I'm saying, make sure, okay, you maybe you're just a buyer. That's fine. You like it the way it is. You, I'm talking to the person who has not decided to sell on YouTube yet. And if you have any questions for any other venues, please let me know. Uh, but decide what, Decide to yourself that you're not going to be a click. That's the number one thing to do. And I know a few people on here have, who have decided that, and they are very much thriving. And they, they don't fall for it. They see it in their chat, and they don't fall for it, and I commend them for it. Yeah, it, it is high. A lot of people, what a lot of people do with that situation but I don't like to do it because I don't like to hold jewelry. I'm so absent-minded and I go through so much jewelry that I literally, I mean, I can show something in a video like tonight's video and someone will ask me, can I buy that Russian? Uh, I, I showed a Russian brooch in my latest video and I'll have to think, where did I leave it? Much less something that's sold. I mean, honestly, so I don't do that, but some people do hold it for one or two auctions or some people will say, I will invoice you for this. And then when we buy something else next time, I'll invoice you for that. Some people hold two or three auctions. That's up to them if they're that organized. But this is my second gig. I actually uh, am overwhelmed it's at my real job, my job in school as a special education teacher. And I can barely function without migraines over there. So believe me, I, I just, I could not do it even as much as I would want to. Yes, bidding against our friends was was awesome at Dwayne's. You've been collecting usually for a while and want to sell online. Any suggestions on how to get started? Melanie, get started on YouTube. I mean, excuse me, not YouTube, not YouTube, not YouTube. eBay, 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 eBay. Take pictures, have them ready. When you're waiting somewhere at a in line at the to pick up your kid at school or at the post office or somewhere, start listing them. As long as you have your pictures ready, it is so easy. You can list probably four things in 30 minutes on eBay. Um, again, with jewelry, I actually prefer the lighting of the outdoors. I don't know. Now it's going to get a little gloomy, I'm sure. But here in Texas, we've got long days and there's nothing better than going outside, sitting, you're getting a little tray, something simple, a little brass tray, a little, even a plate a ceramic dinner dish and put your jewelry on there, put a scarf under it, put something white, something black, depending on the contrast, take a picture of all that jewelry, take measurements. If you need to have that also, or to, some people use the ruler right on the picture. That's what I like to do. Even if I don't actually wind up using that particular picture, but I always have that information, but I would get started on eBay. First and foremost, it is the number one place to sell. And as far as I'm concerned, um, especially if you don't want to go live now. Of course, we have the live videos now. And I am absolutely a um, cheerleader for whatnot. I think it's fantastic. I think it's gotten a bad reputation because people don't give it enough time. It's like anything. And I was going to say also here on YouTube, a lot of people think, oh, I've been in this chat for six months. I've bought half her jewelry uh, and her jewelry. And I've been over there buying all their jewelry. Now I'm going to start my own channel. And uh, I'm going to start selling. Well, you might only get two people watching your videos because YouTube still has to pull it out there. YouTube has to suggest it. And it's not going to happen overnight. 
just like these entertainment videos that I do, they don't get suggested. They didn't start getting really suggested till a couple of years ago. Uh, it was mostly based on search. Now it's based on suggested videos. So just know that, that before you think you can just come on here and start selling like Tanya over at uh, uh, My Jewelry Addiction or, you know, somebody like that, it's not going to happen. No matter how much you spam other channels, and that's very annoying to go onto a channel and say, oh, uh, I'm, I'm doing my, my jewelry show in an hour and, you know, whatever, whatever. Maybe if the host invites you to do it, yes. But spamming to me is just, it's, it's uncalled for. And you haven't established yourself. People have not seen who you are. So it's not going to happen overnight on YouTube. Let me see if I've gotten any more questions and I'll come back and scroll down again in a minute. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Do it on eBay first. Uh, a lot of people still love Posh and Posh is also doing live videos. It's very easy to go on and whatnot, but it is intimidating because you may not get a lot of people in there right away. But know that the people that are there are there to buy. They've already registered their, their uh, credit card. So they are ready to purchase. There is no chasing anybody to pay you for an email address, for, for a YouTube name, da, 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 da. All that stuff that everybody asks for at the beginning of their videos. None of that exists on whatnot. And if you stick to it, you will become a YouTube sensation. If I had the time, I would be on YouTube. I mean, not on YouTube, on whatnot. If I had the time, I would be on whatnot every night. I laud my friend Donatella constantly because I've always respected her work ethic, but I can't tell you how many people trolled her every single time she had an auction. And they didn't stop her from having her auctions. She had very successful auctions here on YouTube. Very successful. She did them for about four years and she did other videos, but mostly that was her, that was her stick. It was uh, reseller lots for resellers and what, and all kinds of things. She sold everything from jewelry to vinyl albums. Well, she is sitting so pretty on whatnot with 12,000 followers on whatnot. I think she left YouTube with six or 8,000 subscribers. She hasn't even been there a year at, on whatnot, but she, 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 she learned the game. She learned the game really fast. She didn't take anything personal. She stumbled and fell and got up and she is one of the top people on whatnot. And, and her jewelry sales are amazing. And like she says, some days you sell a lot, some days you lose money, but she, and she goes on there sometimes two nights, two days, two times a day. It's incredible. Yeah. You just got to keep on. You do. You just have to get established and keep doing it and keep doing it and, you know, sell on other places. Like anything, you realize what kind of a crowd you're going to, you're going to gather. You can shape the kind of crowd that you want to have as well. If you start bringing all these $1 things, that's what you're going to get. But if you start bringing a few dollar things and then bring some $10 things and then some $60 things and people who know what you have will be there. They may not be there the first year even, but they will eventually find you. There are luxury sellers on there who make, there's not one, there's not one thing that they're selling that doesn't sell for over $500. There's people selling used Louis Vuittons, used Cartier, sunglasses, uh, key rings, you know, for three and $400. And they don't have to worry about it. They start them at $5 or $10 or $20 or $100. And they know their established community will bid them up because it's good quality merchandise. They've established their, their customers already. Uh-huh. Let me see if anybody else left me a comment. And thank you again for coming in for the live stream. Mm, let me see. Hi, Miss Becky. I didn't see you. 
cashier's checks on eBay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Repost your question if I missed it. So that's the only thing I caution you about on YouTube. Um, Fisher Clan Creation says, I wish people would just be nice when I shot when I start my videos. There they will be a lot like yours just for education. I mostly like looking at jewelry unboxings. I'll buy I'll buy once in a while, but not much. Yeah, and people love that. Um pretty people pretty much know that if you only do content for selling, that's where you're gonna stay. You're gonna have an established clientele, an established customer base, rather. I don't feel that you're selling services, so the word clientele is a little highfalutin and unnecessary. Um, so your channel will not grow as much if you don't throw in some other content. You have to throw in some other content. Otherwise, I mean, I know people who've been selling only for about six years, and they're still at about 3K. And that those are three very 3,000 very loyal customers, and they're happy that way, and that's fine. Very loyal customers, and they are making their money. And uh, it's a full-time income for them to be selling here on YouTube. And I think that's the only place. No, one of them sells at um, Whatnot and I think over on Etsy as well. But yeah, it's a good idea to do that. And it's a good idea to establish those types of videos first. Uh, well, uh, knockoffs on Whatnot, I, I would not worry about it. They are... They are definitely uh, standing behind their merchandise. I purchased a Louis Vuitton there. It wasn't a knockoff, but uh, the the fact that it had been refurbished was not disclosed to me, so I returned it. It took a little while because you have to actually send it to their customer service. They inspect it, and then they give you a refund after they mail it to the, to the original seller. So uh, they have a very, very good customer service base. They do not tolerate knockoffs. I'm not saying that you won't get any, but they don't tolerate it. So, you know, if you, it's like anything, if you don't assert your rights, you don't get them. Some people like to just, you know, some people don't even like to return things. They just keep it. I don't. If it's something that um, was misrepresented, I return it. You're a Native American beater too. Wow. You're not doing earrings, are you? I ran into a, um, I know Gianna over at uh, Little White Man does beading and wonderful work, but I ran into another lady who was doing earrings and I think she was doing the tutorials as well as the sales. I don't know if that was you or not, or you haven't started yet. Do you think it'd be okay to do jewelry unboxings and beading tutorials on the same channel? Yes, because they're the same. They're the same genre, jewelry. Now, if you're going to do cooking and jewelry, I'd say get another channel. Though I have done whatever I want. That's my ch why my channel has been so slow to grow. Because as I said, when I was doing the YouTube videos, it was just to do videos. I just, I started sharing my love of thrifting and sharing all of my hauls that way. But then I'd just get an inkling and do a vlog from a, a nice restaurant that I, that I found or do a, a new recipe I wanted to share in my kitchen and things like that. But it's best to separate the two. But with both of them being jewelry, no, I wouldn't worry about it. I think you're on to the, you're on to the right track there with both of those things being actual jewelry. Yeah. So I think I covered what I wanted to cover about YouTube cautions. Um, Oh, because another thing I want to say about YouTube is that it's very, um, it's kind of an illusion. It's kind of an illusion. You know, like the illusion setting in jewelry that looks like diamonds, but it's not. Uh, it's kind of an illusion to think that what you, what you're buying, what you're seeing sold or what you see in a thrift with me video sells for what they say it sells because a lot of people are asking me how to price things. And I'll do another video on that. I'll do another live on that. Uh, honest people will come on, and I've seen a couple that actually put it on their videos. And they, in the beginning of the intro, will say, 
what I get for my items may be higher. In other words, mileage will vary. <laughs> mileage will vary. And this person clearly states on her videos, uh, what I get for my items are slightly higher because I have a fan base. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of um, paraphrasing, but that's basically what she's saying. I have a fan base. Therefore, people worship at my, you know, at the church of latter-day influencers. So people want a part of me, so they'll, they will buy it higher. So don't think just because someone holds up a, you know, a little necklace or a ring or some beautiful earrings. These are actually Mexican, beautiful, old, old earrings. And I would probably pr price these around $75 because they're extremely old and beautiful and different. But let's say these were just silver tone and I picked them up at a thrift store and I tell you, oh my goodness, these are seventies. I know these are from the seventies, da, 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 da. And then come see them on my next auction. And then everybody's like, oh my gosh, she actually held those. And she says that they're from the seventies and she knows she has to know. She knows more than anybody. So we're going to buy them for a hundred. They, they bid up to $150. That's very, very arbitrary. And it's not what you're going to get on eBay. <laughs> and it may not even be what you get at your auction until you get, you know, your, your, um, your fan, your zealots and your, your groupies. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying it is what it is. It is what it is. And I know at least two people who have said that my prices are not what you will get on eBay. Your mileage will vary because I have a fan base and people want my stuff. Do you still sell on eBay and are you having any problems returning items? I do sell on eBay. I'm the one with problems on eBay because I have two stores and I keep getting the wrong messages from one. I sold something. The lady hasn't answered me yet about whether she wants me to still ship it because it should have been shipped last week. So um, I don't, the only thing I do have caution with, um, um, with clothing that I've heard a lot of people. I watch uh, this other little reseller group, um, Katie and Vicky, I think they are. And I think Vicky really sells a lot of clothing, especially vintage. And she was saying that she is just so fed up with the returns on clothing because you know it doesn't matter how many times you put on your listing that you do not return items um ebay is trying to to be customer based and they will return the item it doesn't matter if you put it in red and white or black and blue it doesn't matter they're going to return the item um so just be wary of that as far as jewelry i really i rarely have gotten anything returned from jewelry i've returned jewelry I've returned jewelry because I felt it was flimsy and I felt they didn't represent the stones that were on it correctly as far as the size and things like that. Because uh, you can return. You don't even have to have a reason. You can just say you don't like it. The only reason people would make up things as to why they wanted to return it and they would say things like, she didn't give me the right size or whatever, is because they didn't want to have to pay the return shipping. But I don't even think that's applicable these days. I think they just let you print your uh, return address label and you you return it. I've even had an instance where someone told me, what did she tell me the size of the t-shirt? I got, I love this t-shirt. I, I collect Texas shirts and Willie Nelson t-shirts are my favorite Waylon Jennings. And the lady told me it was a large and it was like a large for, for kids. So it didn't fit. So I wanted to return it. And she said, just keep it. <laughs> she said, just keep it. Don't even return it. So they gave me a refund. You've only listed and sold one clothing piece. It got returned. Of course. I know. I know. And I love selling clothes because it, they do sell. I love, I have lots of videos here on things that I sold on eBay, what, what I sell on eBay and the, the art of the sale, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I don't know if it's just because it's easier now or because you just have to uh, make sure you cross every T and dot every I, give them every single measurement, that kind of thing. It, I'm not, that's not going to guarantee it won't come back, but it might make it a little bit, uh, 
you know, where they don't make the mistake of buying something that's not going to fit. That's the, you might avoid some of those unnecessary returns. People that think what drives you nuts is people that think that the, the only stones that exist are those on the presidium gem tester. They're like, oh, the needle goes to such and such. It must be a, I know. Oh, if we've had that discussion with the presidium before. For sure. It's not uh, definitely, in my opinion, not even science-based, but there is, you know, a, a, what is it? A thermal, whatever measurement on it. So I did a video on that too, but no, we know it doesn't test turquoise. It doesn't, it, it's iffy with jade and different things. I kind of trust it with amethyst <laughs> and diamonds. It goes straight to diamonds on that thing. I love that. But yeah, you just have to be very, very cautious. And like Miss Deborah said, uh, back your jewelry. It, don't buy from people who say that they don't, they don't take returns. Now I'm not saying go and, and say, Hey, I got carried away and now I got to pay my rent. I'm not going to pay. Can I return it? Or let me return half of it. I bought all of this, but now I really want to return this half because that buyer's out there too. And, uh, still buying, still returning. I'm sure jewelry almost always fits clothes. Or, yeah, exactly. Clothes are so peculiar and and a size 10 is there's eight and the colors. Oh my gosh. When I first started with eBay too, I would make sure I would say this was taken outdoors and I would take one outdoors, one indoors <laughs> because the color rust turns to orange and turns to red. And you just have to make sure you tell everyone, you know, this is what to expect. Don't, don't get upset. <laughs> For sure. The gem tester doesn't know if it's a real stone. And, right, exactly. It doesn't even know if it's a real stone or lab created. Just gives you an idea of the hardness of the stone. Exactly. Someone was telling me, and I kind of knew already about the diamond testers, the regular ones. A lot of people have been using those for years as well because they do move a little bit. But she was giving me the entire breakdown of the gauge. Like if it went to one, it was topaz. If it went to five, it was this or the other. I thought that was interesting, but... You know, again, I do rely on the loop a lot. I, I've come to, I've really come to recognize glass. You can really see even the chips that it gets around it and um, the inside as well. Now, of course, with anything like a, a blue topaz or something like that, sometimes it's hard. It is. But I'd rather, I'd rather just err on the side of caution and say, look, it's a blue stone. Just go to any of your local thrifts, I mean, uh, local pawn shops. I learned this years ago because I love pawn shops. You pick up a ruby and it can it can say, um, I mean, unless it's like a, a really reputable, which I have taken you to a couple of those, but some of the other pawn shops that I've gone to, they play it safe because they don't want to lose their license. They just put redstone, greenstone, bluestone. They are not going to tell you it's a sapphire because first of all, it might be a lab created. And so they just don't want to be taken to task and have to lose their license over. Don't get me started about Jade. Oh, there's some great, um, do you guys watch the um, Jewelry Journey? I think it was Jewelry Journey. She did a great interview with a guy who wrote a book on Jade and boy, he was intense about it. That's a really good one to read. Or to listen to that podcast. It's a lot of good podcasts out there. We are not to Timu. <laughs> Timu. <laughs> Speaking of Timu, they were supposed to sponsor one of my videos, but I don't know if I want to do it. I feel like it's kind of fast fashion. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Do you guys like Timu? I just don't. I'm, I just feel like we overconsume so much already. I really prefer to buy a lot of my clothing. Uh, to be really good quality from a de good department store or to be really good quality from the Goodwill. That's kind of like my, I just don't like that really fast fashion that, you know, you look one day and the, the seam is already coming apart and r raveling at the seams and things. Yeah. Let's see if I see any of the comments. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. I think we've been on about an hour already. So let me know, though, if you have another question. What's the best place to research items? I don't know. Um, you know, I, again, referring to a, um, a podcast, the gentleman there, and he was an antique dealer. And I think it, 
one of the top houses. And he actually said to him, the best market value is at a pawn shop. That's what he said. At a pawn shop. Of course, there's eBay. Of course, you want to know what's selling on eBay. Go to your solds, go to your auctions and your buy nows because your auctions tell you a lot. They tell you a lot, even if they're starting low, because look at how many people are watching it. Look at how many people are watching a particular item. That will let you know right there the scarcity, the rarity of that piece. Why are they, why is everyone watching and why are they waiting to jump on it? So I do, I do look at the um, listings on eBay. I just don't take them completely as, as creed because you have to know. Hi, Miss Marjana, how are you? I hope you're doing well, sweetheart. Um, I don't take them as creed on eBay because you have to take into account condition, authenticity. Many people don't know what a turquoise stone is. Honestly, some people call everything blue turquoise. Some people call everything green malachite. Mal fake malachite is so good. It literally looks so good. And I see so much of it. Um, so, you know, not to mention Native American, old pond. Oh my gosh, that, that word is overused so often. And um, shamefully so, I might say. Yeah, most definitely. So, but I do look on eBay for, for a little comparison and I never, um, I don't really overprice it more. It depends. Again, you have to think of style. You have to think of rarity. You have to think of relevance. It doesn't matter if it's a Monet or a Coro, a signer or whatever. Is someone really wearing it? Is someone really wearing it? Or are they just telling you, hey, I found this at a thrift store and I know that this is from so-and-so and look how great they look. And you're caught up in the science. You're caught up in the psychology of a, of an auction. Don't take the auctions as creed. I'm telling not these, not these auctions, not the ones here. No. You want to know a real price of a real, of an auction, go to a real auction, get the, get the catalog. They will sell you the catalogs and look in there, look in there. Your old pawn is driven old pawn shop. <laughs> awesome. Gloria says, my name is Gloria Pushfonte. You have a prolapsed uterus and I'm going to die. My uterus, oh God, you are so disgusting. Mm. That is so sad, isn't it? Isn't that a sad state of affairs? This is what I'm telling you. And you want to sell... <laughs> Be aware, be aware of what we get in here. And thank you so much. <laughs> I should have known by the name. <laughs> that is so uh, benign though. One day, I don't know if you were here, Anita, but one day we had a, we had a real raid. That's when they were doing the discord. I think it was about eight years ago. The, the kids from Discord would come on, and this was like almost like the planking of a few years ago. So they would find a live video. They would uh, come on and say the most disgusting, much more disgusting than what she said right now. And But you couldn't stop them. I had probably three mods that day. They couldn't stop them. They were just one after another, one after another, because they all got together on Discord, and they would just infiltrate live videos and then one of them would play the live video and and you know they would just get a kick out of our reaction the host reaction that's what they wanted kind of like uh, a peeping tom you know that's what they live for the reaction right it's not that they that's the thrill they get is getting your reaction so same thing with the crazy people <laughs> you remember and a lot of people were getting it <laughs> a lot of people were getting that yeah that was crazy. Yeah, that's what they look for, the lives. That or giveaways. So that's why I don't put, uh, I don't buy subscribers with giveaways or announce them in my, in my titles because that's what they do. Oh, I know, I know. And I was in, I was teaching middle school. 
still, no, I was teaching elementary school, elementary school. And my fifth graders were the ones who told me about it. They said they did it not that way, but they would do other troll raids. Like they would get on gamers channels and, and troll raid them. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Literally called a troll raid. Yep. <laughs> yeah. The TikTok challenges. Oh my gosh. So crazy. All right. So guys, if y'all don't have any other questions, I think I touched on, on everything, but be sure and let me know any more questions, comments, suggestions over on my community tab. I did leave a thread there where people asked me to speak about starting to sell what you need. I again will reiterate, you need a smartphone, a tripod. If you have it, you don't even need a, a tripod. If you don't have it, hold it up some way. I taped mine I taped mine to a lamp that was hanging above me when I first did a, an unboxing video. That's how I did my smartphone until I got a um, tripod. So we all start somewhere. And um, I suggest you start on eBay and not YouTube. I suggest if you do start on YouTube, you start with other videos first. Make yourself known as uh, a jewelry collector, a jewelry aficionado. Do not ride the coattails of others and then uh, drop them as fast as you can and talk about them and become a click and blackball everyone in your wake. Uh, that doesn't really, doesn't look good on you, but um, be cautious that that is, be very, very cautionary that that is what you deal with, not to mention the lovely trolls that came in and said something funny. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Jill. Be sure and give it a thumbs up. I will very likely be back next Sunday with another suggestion. I had some wonderful suggestions, so I do appreciate it. Leave them in this video as well. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and bring your friends back with you next time. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.